welcome to the vlog. So I haven't done these in a while, uh, but I'm doing a vlog now because I wanna talk about the article that I wrote in Women's Health. Uh, perhaps you've seen it. It has the hilarious title of uh, Polyamorous, Pansexual, and Proud, uh, which I did not choose. <laughs> it's a, a very intense title. But the point of the article is about um, not being gay enough and not being straight enough. And it's about sort of uh, the reaction to bisexuals or pansexuals, I'm still figuring out what I want to be in that regard, uh, by the gay community and by the straight community. I wanted to elaborate a little bit on that article. You can read it in, I'll put it in the description below. Um, so read it and then come back <laughs> and watch this video for more information about it. Um, but basically, uh, it was really funny because I I've been using the word polyamorous but um, a lot of times uh, people are like, so is that mean that you're, you know, having, having a lot of sex or you're having like a lot of group sex or whatever it is with people. And honestly, like all it means is it's, it's just non-exclusive, right? Like back in the day when you would date around, I presume in the 50s, I've seen Bye Bye Birdie once. In the 50s, you would date around and then you would like go steady, right? And so imagine that this is just non-exclusive. It's just you, um you know, you're not going steady. Or you are going steady, but you're just allowed to date around. However, the only difference with polyamory is that uh, it's it's hinged on honesty, right? So there's like a lot of, uh, the point is that you tell everybody that you're not exclusive or that you're dating around. So, okay, get that out of the way. That's a very basic thing I wanted to include in the article that I, I'm not sure if it came across. So this is sort of like an addendum to the article. Um, the other thing, is I want to talk about a friend of mine's response to the article. Uh, she's one of the people in the article that, uh, in the, the paragraph where we talk about how someone said, uh, I'm so happy we're all gay, kind of. So she, I spoke to her a little bit about it. I was never mad at her, obviously, but I spoke to her about it and uh, she was like, the only reason that I said that in that way is because I was trying to not erase your bisexuality, which is a thing that I hadn't even considered, right? So. Her lumping me in as gay to her felt like she was doing by erasure. She was um, making like, you know, lumping me in with gay and she wasn't sure if I wanted to be called gay. And that is incredibly valid. Uh, that is something I should have thought of in the article. But yeah, it was an interesting point of view to hear because I, I didn't realize that she was doing that on purpose not to erase me as a queer woman, but to like include me as not being a lesbian, which is a, a very nice of her and an effort that she was trying to make and I, I didn't realize that. I also wanted to use this video to tell a couple of stories about, um, I mentioned it in the article a little bit, but about the, the difference between um, being perceived as straight and being perceived as gay and being out with a boyfriend and being out with a girlfriend. So I talk a little bit about how my boyfriend right now is 6'7". He's a very large man. And he, when I'm out with him, nobody bothers us. Nobody bothers us when we're kissing. Nobody bothers us when we're walking. Nobody bothers us when we're holding hands. Uh, when people are introduced to the two of us, a lot of times they will just shake his hand and not even like acknowledge me unless he gives them permission to acknowledge me, which I've been told is like a manners thing, but also is like very weird. But I think people are, are deferred to him and are scared of him. And um, I've had the complete opposite experience uh, when I present as lesbian or when I'm dating a woman. So uh, I, I was out with a girl recently and uh, I talked about this on Twitter a bit. We had been apart and we were reconnecting. And uh, at, at the end of the night we were leaving the bar and this guy came up and he was like, I just want to say ladies that it's been a pleasure watching you this night because uh, you're like, I, I've really enjoyed like you guys, like watching you guys like love each other and stuff. And she was like, oh, that's cool because it, it was for you. So I'm glad you enjoyed this performance that was clearly for you. And that would never happen if I was out with my, that's literally never happened. I was joking on Twitter. I was like, I hope, I, where is that guy? I wish there was a guy that would come up and be like, Gabby and Garrett, like, I have enjoyed watching the two of you together all night. Where, where are you, sir? I was out at a bar with a girl and this, we were clearly together. And this guy kept talking to us, kept coming up to us, kept talking to us. We were on a date. And he was like, well, just because you're lesbians doesn't mean you have to be mean. I've never had a guy sit down at the table with me and a guy I was clearly on a date with and try to talk to us. Never. 
That would not happen. That seems absurd, right, to think about. But why is it okay for me to be out with this girl clearly on a date? I mean, the guy wasn't misconstruing it. He called us lesbians. Why was he, why did he feel comfortable sitting down at our table? Like, it's just this sort of very different thing that I think as someone who dates both, I have I can, you know, I'm just re reporting what happens on both sides. And it's very mind-blowing. I mean, if I was walking with my ex-girlfriend, we would get whistled at. No one whistles at me with my six, seven boyfriend. Someone whistle at us is what I'm saying. <laughs> He's so cute, you guys. Why isn't anybody catcalling us together? There was an instance where uh, a bunch of us went out to a bar in West Hollywood for when, the night that marriage equality was made legal. And we went out to the bar and everyone was celebrating and it was like clearly West Hollywood, clearly a bunch of gay people. And we were all leaving the bar because in LA there you have to leave the bar at 2 a.m. Uh, people in New York, please uh, stop having a conniption. I know it's crazy. And um, and so we were filing out and this guy came up and started trying to talk to us and hit on us. And my ex-girlfriend just goes, not today, not today, buddy. It's another example of um, people treating gay women together differently than treating me when they perceive me as straight. So that's kind of a, a an addendum to the article. That's something I wanted to talk about. If you have similar experiences, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear them. Uh, I think the more of these that we gather, the better it will be for bi visibility. And um, if you like the article, let me know. Um, I'm really happy that a magazine like Women's Health ran this article because I think it's very mainstream magazine and it's a magazine that a lot of like moms read and you wouldn't expect this kind of content from them. So I was really happy to sort of like bring it to a very mainstream publication. You know, it's not like a gay publication at all. So um, that was super cool. And um, that's all. Okay, that's all. Uh,